Boom. Boom. Paint that baby up. It's like putting a puzzle together. When you know that piece fits, you paint it up, put it in place. Let the contractors know how proud you are of your locate. Let them know that this paint mark is a thing of art made by TB. Yeah. Underground utilities are everywhere. In fact, there's 20 million miles around the world of underground utilities. That's basically a football field length for every man, woman, and child. And there's 20,000 damages to those underground utilities every month in just the U.S. alone. How do we protect ourselves? How do we protect from outages and from costly repairs? Well, we use electromagnetic locators. That's the most common way uh, to find the underground utilities. Get them painted out and get them protected so they're not hit. And we start with sticking it. Do you get that? Well, I can do better. Well, it all starts with the ground rod anyways. Where do you stick it? And click it. Stick it and click it. Click onto the facility with our transmitter using the red lead. And we take the black lead. Guess where that goes? To a ground rod. So step one when you're locating is locate an access point. Where are we going to be able to throw signal into that line. We're gonna light it up with the transmitter. And so an above ground feature such as this riser right here has a tracer wire right next to it that we can hook to. And that tracer wire is specifically there so we can apply an AC signal down it in a frequency and go get it detected. Where do you put the ground rod? Well, you consult your maps and you kind of look around at above ground features on where the possible utility is going. We want to put this at a 90 degree angle or in an isolated area. So I'm a guessing that this service comes out and goes to that street or it goes out to that street. So I'm going to put my ground over there. And here we go. Mm, look at that. All right. Red lead from the transmitter goes to the utility black lead goes to the ground you got about 20 foot of cable here and it's enough to get that ground pretty far away from your access or your your place where you're hooking up the red lead step two let's turn on the transmitter and let's light this baby up so we're going to throw a frequency down that line that we're going to receive with the receiver how do we tell if we got a good connection to the riser or to whatever we're locating out and to the ground rod? Well, we look at the milliamp reading over on the right side over here. So your output level is up on the top left hand corner. You can control that with the up down arrows. So if I just go down, down to one bar of output, I'm pushing out 10 milliamps on 512 right now. So the 10 milliamps is letting me know I got enough signal to possibly locate this whole yard out. And that's all I'm concerned about is pushing out just enough signal to locate what I need to get located and not going too far because the more you push out the more milliamps you push out the more likely you are to possibly bleed off but 512 is a really good low frequency that doesn't bleed off very well so it's, it's going to travel the longest distance out of all the frequencies and let's concentrate on three different ones 512 8 kilohertz and 33 i'm just pushing the f key for frequency to change my frequencies here so think of that as low medium and high when you're having a hard time getting that milliamps to go down that line, it could be because the utility's damaged or it's not grounded on the far end, or the ground itself is really dry. Well, the higher frequencies will help with that. So eight kilohertz is your good choice to go to next beyond 512. Those are the two you wanna use for a direct hookup, 512 or eight. You notice when I go to eight, I got 20 milliamps going down the line with two bars of output. If I go up one more step on my output to three bars, will give me 100 milliamps. But either way, you want to see milliamps. That's letting you know you got flow going on. You're lighting it up. And so I'm just going to turn this baby down, leave it on 8 kilohertz, keep it on 20 milliamps, and remember that number right there because we're going to measure that with the receiver. So the next step, do you know what it is? Anybody? Anyone? Yeah. Uh, turn on the receiver. Let's turn our receiver on. All right, next step, turn the receiver on. Pretty simple, on off key right there. We'll turn the receiver on and it comes right back onto where it was last. Well, we're gonna match up our frequencies. Remember what frequency we're using at the transmitter? 
that's right, eight kilohertz. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna hit the F key and change it to eight kilohertz on here. The frequencies are all found in the bottom left-hand corner. Keep rotating through until you see eight kilohertz. There we go. Now that I'm on eight, eight kilohertz, the next thing you worry about is making sure you have enough sensitivity in order to pick up that signal. How many milliamps were we pushing out? 20, remember 20. And so we're gonna try to receive that 20 milliamps on the receiver by sweeping the area. We got our ground rod over here. If you get too close to your ground rod, you're obviously gonna pick up the ground rod and the black lead. But let's start there and start moving away from that. And my signal strength or my sensitivity is set to 60 right now. Let's turn it up to around 80. That's 80 out of 140. So it's just a little bit beyond halfway and I'm just circling around where I'm hooked up, making a big arch. Oh. Looky there, we can hear it, you can hear it. Boom. That was fire back there. Got a little something going on there. You're gonna get erroneous little signals because these milliamps are making their way back through the ground to get back to the ground rod. So you get out here far enough, you're gonna see this. You're gonna see a little bit of a reaction over here. Well, that's return current headed back to the transmitter. What we're looking for is pretty dang obvious. So if you just keep on walking and boom, there it is. So when you hit 99.9, you just want to bump it down a step. So hit the down arrow, decrease the sensitivity, started off at 80, but now I'm down to 54. So I'm looking for a peak response. Let's just concentrate over here on the right side of the screen right now at our antenna responses. If I push this button on the right, it will change my antenna response. And what we're looking for is a big hill icon, just like that, a big hill is my peak response. There's no arrows on the screen of the receiver to let us know left or right, but I'm gonna turn it down one more notch. And this is all we're doing on a peak response. Look how easy that is. You watch the bar graph, you watch the numbers, wherever you get the highest response, that's where she's at. And it saves a little tick mark on the screen of the receiver when it hits its highest response. And you just come right back to it. It just stays there for a couple seconds and you can move right along. Once you're over the top of that line, how do we verify if we're on the right line or not? How many milliamps were we pushing out from the transmitter? That's right, 20. How many are we receiving on the receiver? 18.4. And our depth rating is one foot 10. How do we check that? Well, if you go halfway up the bar graph of the front of your receiver, that's about a foot high, or if you use a measuring tape, just know where a foot high is on your shin and pick up the receiver off the ground exactly a foot, and it should add exactly a foot to your depth measurement. So what were we against the ground? We were at one foot 11, raise it up a foot, it should go to two foot 11. Right about there, There's a foot high, two foot 11. The other things on the receiver that let you know if you got a good signal or not is your compass should be orientated exactly the same direction as your utility that you're trying to locate. When you get to a turn on the line, such as at the end of this service here, you're going to see that compass tilt. Now it's looking a little confused, it doesn't know which way to go, and so I've passed the end of that line. I got no signal out here, and so I'll just walk it back, go back to where I was picking up the signal. I know it's right there. Oh, there we go. Mark that with just a dot, and then I'll get away from that area and go perpendicular, turn up my sensitivity, because again, we're just locating current. And we had 20 or 18 milliamps back on that service line, but guaranteed when we hit this main, those milliamps are gonna be split in two different directions. So with less current, I'm gonna to have to turn up my sensitivity. And now I got 8.36 milliamps on this right here. So here's your main line. There's your service line. Let's see if we can find the main over here. Oh, it sounds higher over here. We got 12 milliamps over here. You can just hear the audio difference. It's just louder. And so line up those two and T marks the spot. There's your T for the gas service. Another way you can tell if you're on the right line or not is your antenna configuration. So that's the last button that we haven't covered over on the right side. We pushed it once to get to peak response, but if I push it again, it adds arrows that tell me to go left and right. Those arrows are a null response. 
if those arrows are in the same spot as the numbers you can be pretty well assured you got a good locate so those arrows help guide you along they move you left and right you can see here that it's saying the arrows are right there but if i look at my numbers where are my numbers say it's at same spot so that means i got a nice round magnetic field i got a good signal i'm picking up and everything should be good including the depth reading but use your milliamp reading your depth reading on the screen all the time and if i push that button one more time we go to guidance mode guidance mode looks like a tesla symbol on guidance mode it eliminates you having to use the sensitivity arrows it actually does everything automatically you just follow the numbers wherever you get the highest number that's when i'm over it follow the arrows left and right and it has a little shadow effect emulating the actual cable or pipe that you're locating so that's the easiest one to get used to but for accuracy and speed it's best to go to peak mode and just use it on peak listen for the highest response boom it's like putting a puzzle together when you know that piece fits you paint it up put it in place let them know that this paint mark is a thing of art this is a question we get a lot how do you keep these cables from not tangling well it's easy all you do is wrap them up separately and you can stick them in these little holes these little pockets off to the side over here and then pull them out one at a time when you go to your next locate the other thing you can do get them to kiss Mwah. french kiss each other and by clipping them together and then winding it up they won't get it tangled so at least on your next locate when you go to pull them out they're somewhat separated but do whatever you want to do and once you're totally tired of them getting tangled you can go ahead and order the uh, curly cables from us but i like the reach of the 20 foot cables because i like to get that ground out away from where i plan on locating but if you can't hook up direct how do you apply a signal without a direct hookup let's go over it Woo! this is a mess everything's connected together you've got a ground wire going from the meter box the electric meter over to the cable tv coax cable and then another ground right here going over to this cable tv and i bet you right on inside the house here you have the water also connected to the electric panel and so if you hook up to any of that it's going to ignite it it's going to light it all up we want to isolate that signal and we want to avoid having to use this ground rod so the other option is handy dandy little ring clamp this is a four inch ring clamp they come in two inch they come in five inch they come in eight and a half inch this avoids using a, a ground rod i get that right around that three inch conduit it's perfect this hooks into your transmitter and then when you're using a ring clamp it's an induction method you're trying to jump signal from one line to another and so the best frequency to do the jumping is the high frequencies high frequencies are like on speed man they are just ready to explode they're super fast oscillating and they just jump onto everything so 33 kilohertz is what i'm going to use because i want to try to stay a little low on my frequency but be high enough to actually jump that signal across and we're not going to get a milliamp reading on the transmitter it's just letting us know a percentage wise of how much output we're putting out so let's get out here with the receiver turn the receiver on light it up and then turn on the receiver match up your frequency i'm on eight kilohertz because that was that's what i was on last using a direct hookup as soon as i go to 33 look at there me's got some signal oh man it's right there so i'm able to measure my milliamps right here we're close in proximity to where we hooked up so i got a 33 milliamp reading right here and that'll be my benchmark going forward just making sure those milliamps stay nice and congruent they're going to slowly dissipate but that's not the only way that you can also apply signal let's do the induction drop in the box method but we're not going to drop the box we're going to set it down nicely with a pillow so let's go grab the transmitter everything's unplugged it goes automatically into induction mode check out the screen it shows a little animation saying hey buddy look at me i'm throwing signal underneath the box right now well it is it's using a big ferrite rod found right there and we want to place that over the top of where we assume that utility is and get far enough away from the transmitter I'm gonna get everything back together here get far enough away from the transmitter so we don't pick up the transmitted signal because it's like a radio station right now it's emitting signal all around it and we want to get out in front or behind it so it doesn't matter if you i know that utility is here because we just located it using the ring clamp but we can turn 
the transmitter that way or that way. As long as the handle go in the same direction, we can now get out here our ways. And again, I'm using 33 kilohertz, keeping it simple. Remember the high frequency is going to allow it to jump across. And then I start sweeping the area. So go right, go left. I'm in a peak mood. Whoop, is there something there? Nothing there. You, get, you, you move this too fast and start swinging it like this, you start picking up some atmospheric interference. So take your time, keep it straight up and down, and eventually, oh, there we go. We got something there. And anything else? I'm just keep on going. I don't, I'm never happy with the first response. Is there anything there? There we go, right back to where we were. And I'm gonna turn down my sensitivity so I can exactly find the highest response and there we go four foot two picking up 2.8 milliamps you want to make sure you're not just picking up the box though so get 30 40 foot away from the box we are at an angle so the box is facing that way and we're picking up the utility going this way so that's a good sign that we're actually following a utility and not just the the front ghost from the box but if you tilt this towards the box and your signal goes up now you know you're too close to the box you're picking up the box but if you tilt it and it goes down like it just was you know you're picking up the utility and the utility just turned here i'm watching my compass tell me to go this way oh look at that just did a dog leg man whoever was putting this utility in was drunk on the trencher boozing it up all right there we go still at three and a half foot deep 1.89 1.9 on our milliamps everything looks great so that was the simplest super fast locate training and we got some additional modules you can go on to next. But in a nutshell, that's your escalator training. That took the time of riding up an escalator in an airport, right? There's maybe an elevator, really slow elevator where everybody pushed the buttons. But there you go, call us if you got questions.